Wow, that is good. Thank you, Steve. Thank you for everybody. I'm glad you are excited. I'm excited to be here too for the after lunch slot. No sleepiness in the after lunch slot. Uh, but I am excited to be here. Um, I was training a client yesterday, so I wasn't able to be here yesterday, but very pleased to be here and hear Abby present uh, this morning. It's going to link in really nicely. So from what Abby presented to what I'm presenting uh, today is going to link in really nicely. So good stuff. Our training, my training, is all about implementation. So the last thing that I want, and probably what you want, the last thing is to do a rah-rah session or just to give you good information. We're at a sales and marketing workshop, so what I really want to make sure is that you guys can implement so if you can write as much as you can, I've, I've seen you this morning taking lots and lots of notes, which is fantastic. So let's make sure that continues because as I said a couple of times already this morning, there's lots of information over the two days. So what we need to do at the end is to pick out what are the key things we're going to implement so that we can get that growth that we're after. So let's make sure you're taking lots and lots of notes. Uh, you're very welcome to, to ask some questions. I've got, I've got two sessions today. So from Impact Training, as Steve said, we help businesses and, and owners and managers get lifestyle, reduce stress back in their employment or their business. And we do that through sales, leadership and communications training. So with only trainers that train on the structure of sales and leadership and best practice and then combine that with the soft skills of behaviour and body language, NLP and communication. So I'm going to do a bit of both today. This first session is going to be about structure and how to communicate how to do some of the things that Abby spoke about this morning, how to put that into place, give you some communication sequences that you can go back and deliver on straight away this afternoon, over the weekend, whenever you're back in. And then in the second session, we're going to go through some soft skills uh, about how to add behavioural styles, NLP, tonality, etc., into those best practices. You guys okay with that? Yep, good, all right. So... We are fortunate to be able to travel all around the world and uh, do a lot of work here in Australia and internationally as well, uh, helping businesses and owners. And, and it's something that I think is important for you to know is that in 2002, so my career has been in sales and, and sales leadership for, for 23 years, but in 2002, I was actually trained by impact training. I was trained by what I'm going to deliver you with. Obviously, things have improved and changed with technology over the years. But I sat in your seats and I learned this information for the first time. And I've used it every day in my own career, uh, bless you, as a salesperson and a leader, teaching my staff, and then I've been consulting since 2009. So I don't tell you that to impress you. I tell you that to impress upon you that I'm not presenting and teaching you today from a perspective of, I read something in uh, a textbook and I think you'd like to hear it. <laughs> I'm delivering it from, I live and breathe and have done for a long time. And the best part of it, it's really good for you from a business development perspective, but it's also very good for your customers and clients and potential clients. So what we're going to do is to create V for Value, which has been spoken about a few times today. We want to create an environment with our sales process where people choose to be part of what you do, not feel like they've been sold to. So yeah, we're going to write that down. First thing to write down. We're going to create a, a best practice where your customers and potential customers feel that they've chosen to be part of what you do, not feel like they've been sold to. So we're very fortunate at sales, leadership, communications, training, connecting the two. We get to uh, travel around the place and uh, present to specific clients. We do mentoring one-on-one. -on -one. We present at conventions with some of these crazy people. Uh, this is Steve, Steve Jensen, uh, who Steve uh, said as part of the introduction. Um, he's our uh, CEO and founder of Impact Training Corporation. And one of his webinars was on your portal um, for the academy just recently. So you'll see a bit of him as well. I'm, a, I'm from Adelaide, actually. I uh, live in Adelaide, but travel around everywhere from there. Yeah, thanks, Tim. I was waiting for a pause, just so you can get that in, mate. We rehearsed that last night. Um, and a father, husband, I've got two cool kids, uh, Brooke, who's 14, yep, teenage daughter in the house, 
Uh, so when we talk about communication, I'm using that in with my 14-year-old daughter, of course, uh, and 11-year-old son, Blake. So when I fly home tonight, after playing with you wonderful people, uh, I'll become sports dad for the weekend and be you know, running around with the kids like many of you, taking them to sport, coaching some of their, their teams over the weekend, which is pretty cool. So that's really from a purpose perspective, which sounds like you spoke about yesterday, how that's what it's all about for me, uh, is making sure that we create a great lifestyle. And, and the beauty of what we talk about with sales and communication, particularly from a communication perspective, where effective selling is effective communication, right? Effective selling is effective communication. It's not just in our businesses or our work mode. We take all those skills and we implement them with our loved ones and our families and our friends to be better communicators right through. So that's also, yes, we're here for business, but I want you to keep that in the back of your mind. How do we use some of these skills over the next two sessions just to be better communicators full stop? All right? So let's do it. Let me ask you a question. Can you put your hand up if you are excited to be a salesperson? Put your hand up if you're a salesperson. Not too many. <laughs> Good, thank you. Now, some of you uh, knew why I did that. Uh, I do a video series every week. I'll give you some free stuff actually at the end of our sessions today where you can be part of that. Uh, and the one on Tuesday was about this topic where I often present to a group and say, put your hand up if you're a salesperson. And just like, what happened? <laughs> A few people reluctantly put their hand up. Tim put his hand up really high because I think he's watched my video. And it happens regularly, right? Often I'll train just salespeople for a company and even the salespeople don't put their hand up and say I'm a salesperson. <laughs> so when I'm training administration and leaders and customer care and finance from a one business all in the same room, well, of course, not too many people put their hand up. We're in a sales and marketing event today, boot camp. <laughs> <laughs> Still only a few people put their hand up. Now, listen, I get, I get why, and Abby covered that off a little bit this morning. But let me ask you another question. Can you put your hand up if you want all or one of the above to be um, an effective communicator, to have a message and be able to deliver it with value, and or to have a positive influence on people? Anyone interested in any of those things? All of you, 100%. Okay. So the message is, it's one and the same, isn't it? We use, Abby used the car salesman from a million years ago approach. That's not what we're after. We're not the, the salesperson that rips people off and just will do anything to take money. An effective salesperson today is an effective communicator. Can you write that down? I know you've heard it before, but just write it down. Anyway, effective selling is effective communication. <laughs> Thank you, well done. <laughs> Bonus points for you. So if we can help you and you can become an implement to be able to communicate with value, to have a positive influence on other people and to be an effective communicator, whatever you call yourself, salesperson or not salesperson, I don't care, but they're one and the same. So next time I ask that question, now that you know a salesperson isn't someone that just rips people off, a salesperson, like Abby said, uh, a salesperson is someone who is an effective communicator, can deliver a message with value and have a positive influence on other people, then I want you to put your hands up proudly. Next time I ask, you say, yes, I'm a salesperson. So we're going to combine that uh, over the next two sessions. So what we're going to do is to start with, and you've again touched on it this morning, is to take a step. You've got A level. We've all got A level of success, right? Right now. So what do we need to do to take the next level of success to take us to the next step? So in Abby and Steve's presentation this morning, you wrote down a goal. So I just want you to find that goal again. Where do you want to be? What's your next level of success? Can you find that goal? If you can't find it, rewrite it. If you can find it, put three big circles around it. I want you to get back in touch with that goal of yours. So rewrite it if you need to. If you can find it, put three big circles around it. Where do you want to get to? What is that next level of success for you? So as we said, we want to create an environment where people see value in what you do. They choose to be part of your business as a customer or client, not feel like they've been sold to. So let's make sure we can do that. 
We have two understandings of decision making, selling biology, that all of our best practices are based on. Science proven about how humans work, <laughs> how this thing between our two ears works, how we go about making decisions. And Abby's touched on one, we'll go a little bit deeper on that now, she's, she's introducing beautifully. And so I'll get you to write these two things down. The first one is that emotions are 100% of decision making. Emotions are 100% of decision making. And Abby said it perfectly, people buy emotionally and justify it logically. Emotions, feelings are 100% of decision making. The second understanding that we know of how do we have a positive influence over decision making is that avoiding pain is the greatest motivator for humans to make a quick decision. Avoiding pain is the greatest motivator of human behaviour for a quick decision. So if you want less follow-up, if you want a shorter time between your presentation and the client saying yes, you want to increase close rates, then we need to understand these two things. It's one thing to understand, it's second to how do I have a little communication sequence that you own, that it feels like you, that you've practiced, that you can go and deliver on. So I'm going to give you that today. Has anyone seen this slide or this photo before? Yep. So this is a quick explanation. Now usually we would take half a day to train this in a particular business. So we're doing a, obviously a fairly fast version of it today, but you'll be able to get it. There's two parts of the brain that are involved in decision making. The first one medically is called the neocortex, the neocortex. Now we like to keep things nice and simple. We call that the red brain. So somewhere around there, just write red brain above neocortex. This is all in your notes, by the way. So the neocortex is the red brain. And the red brain is all about logic, facts, data, all the logical information. The other part of the brain is the limbic brain, the limbic brain, which we call the green brain. So I want to hear you guys in your businesses having red and green brain conversations. Was that a red brain conversation? Was that a green brain conversation? I want that to be your terminology. Red brain, neocortex, facts and figures. The limbic brain is the green brain, which is all about feelings and emotions. Which get Abby touched on as well. So how do we use this? Well, there's nothing in between. If we're having a red brain conversation about facts, figures, data, pricing, dimensions, time frames, whatever, then the red brain is turned on and the green brain is turned off and you'll hurt conversion. The good news is, if we're describing our products and services and connecting it to an emotion, well, the green brain is turned on, the red brain is turned off, and people will make a quick decision on value. Value means you can charge more, and they still feel that they get better value. If we're just presenting red brain, logic, then price wins. So the way that you get business is that you've got the cheapest in the market if it's just red brain. Now, if you're cheapest in the market and someone else becomes cheapest in the market, well, it's a downward slope, isn't it? So no one wants to be selling cheapest in the market. We can create value by connecting red to green. I'm going to show you how to do that real shortly. But there's no purple brain. There's nothing in the middle. We need to understand that one is on and one is off. So again, I'll get you to write this down. 100% of decisions, 100% of decisions is made in the green brain and 0% of decisions is made in the red brain. 100% of decisions made in the green brain, 0% of decisions made in the red brain. Now, for those that have seen that slide before, you would have seen it through a Simon Sinek video. We use it regularly, we use it in our full day's training. If you haven't watched it, or even if you have, I encourage you to watch it again. So I'll get you to write it down so you can go and look it up. Simon, I'm sure you can spell that. Uh, Sinek is S-I-N-E-K, S-I-N-E-K. He's got a TED talk called The Golden Circle, The Golden Circle. It's about 14 minutes. So you can go to TED.com or you can just YouTube it. It's used a lot, so you'll easily find it. And he also has a book which is called Start With Why, which has got lots of really good business examples in there as well. So I strongly encourage you to get a better understanding to go and look at uh, Simon Sinek's video, The Golden Circle. And he says that people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. People don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. What you do is the red brain. Bye -bye. Why you do it is the green brain. 
or connecting it to the emotion that the potential client is wanting to move towards or wanting to avoid. It's a feeling. 100% of decisions is made through a green, a green brain. So, as you know, people buy emotionally and justify logically. Let me give you an example. I'm sure you've been in a sales environment where logically everything lined up and for some reason you didn't buy. So let's say you needed a new plasma TV for your lounge room. And you knew logically exactly what size, what high definition, what surround sound, what price you wanted that to fit into. And on Saturday you go to all these retailers and you're checking it all out. And a salesperson at one of these retailers shows you one that's perfect. It's the right size, it's the right surround sound, it's the right price, it's the right high definition. But for some reason you walk out of that retailer without buying. You don't know why. All you can say to yourself, it didn't quite feel right. Logically it all lined up. But for some reason, feeling took over. Maybe you didn't have the right connection with the salesperson. Maybe you didn't build enough rapport or mutual commonality with you. But what's happening in retail now is that they're creating emotion. So if they said, hey, Tim, what are you going to do? What do you like to do with your TV? And Tim says, I'm a rugby fan. I love to have the boys around on the weekend. Watch the rugby game. Awesome. And that retailer gets a little USB with, let's say, last year's grand final or Tim's favourite team, puts it into the TV, turns the volume up. Is this the sort of thing you're after, Tim? In the shop? It creates a feeling in Tim. And he goes, yeah, that's exactly what I'm after. He buys. Same TV, different feeling. And it's happening in audios and speakers and all those sorts of things at the moment as well. You go and buy a, um, a speaker and they say, oh, what sort of music are you into? Or more commonly now, they say, hey, do you have your music on your phone? Which, of course, everyone does. Oh, let's plug it in and see what it sounds like. Now the retailer's playing your favourite music through their speakers, which creates a feeling. What do you do? You buy. And you're willing to spend more money on it than you would if it was just, this is the size, this is the amps, this is the price. So, a good example of feelings are 100% of decision making. What my goal is today is not just to give you good information, not just to, I'm not going to give you a rah-rah session. <laughs> I'm going to give you stuff to take away. So let's do it. So how do we do this? How do we put a communication sequence? How do you explain your product and services to connect to an emotion? Well, we have a little acronym. We have an acronym called PFIBI. So we're going to talk this through. You've got it in your notes. We can talk it through. Now, part of the sales best practice, as I'm sure you're aware, although it doesn't happen very well in business or in sales or in communication, is that we need to diagnose a problem, diagnose a problem before prescribing a solution. This is your sales process. Whether it's short, long, detailed, not detailed, we need to diagnose a problem before prescribing a solution. Because we need to do a green brain conversation. How do we connect your products and services to an emotion if we don't know the emotion? We can't. So we must diagnose a problem. Imagine if I went to my doctor and I was in the waiting room and the doctor opens his door and says, Darren, you're next. And he shakes my hand and says, Darren, I know exactly what you need. Just take these tablets, do it twice a day for three weeks. You'll be feeling amazing. I go, doctor, you didn't ask me any questions. How can you give me medication if you haven't asked me any questions, right? But in business, what do we do? Oh, you're interested in my product. Great, let me tell you about it. Bye -bye. No, stop. Diagnose a problem first. That earns the right for you to prescribe a solution, and then we go red to green, which means you do a logical to an emotional conversation. Let me give you an example. So, we have our... For Phoebe. The P, as you can see in your notes and on the screen there, Abby did break this too, is pain or pleasure. Pain or pleasure. So that says diagnose the problem. We need to understand from our potential client or customer what is the emotion they want to move toward or what is the emotion that they move, want to move away from. So Tim, from Win More Clients, with a potential customer, someone that's inquired with you, 
What are they telling you when you ask them some questions about, and by the way, I'm gonna give you those questions. How do you ask these questions to diagnose a problem? I'll give you that to that before we wrap up today. What are they saying to you, mate? They're, they're giving you some logical stuff, but what is the emotions? What is the feeling they wanna to move towards or the feeling they wanna move away from? Okay, so they're uncertain with their sales pipeline. Uh, so they want to increase their security. How is being uncertain with their sales pipeline making them feel? What's happening there? Uh, nervous. Okay, they're feeling nervous. All right, and maybe they also want to do feel more confident that they're capturing all of their leads and whatever. So there's a few feelings, right? So the first step is to diagnose the problem. So what I want you to do real quick is I want you to write down what are the potential feelings that your customers have? What's a positive feeling that they want to move to from using your products and services? And what is the current feeling, a negative feeling, that they want to avoid? Is it that they're frustrated and they want to be, have more pride in their business? Is it they're embarrassed and they want to be more satisfied? So just take a couple of minutes to jot that down. What are the feelings that, what do you fix is the answer, isn't it? <laughs> what do you fix? What feelings do you fix? What do you move them to and what do you move them away from? I'll give you a couple of you to share some examples in a second if that's okay. So first we need to diagnose the problem. Now by the way, I'm purposely training you out of order. So I'm about to tell you how to, and teach you how to describe your products and services to connect with an emotion. So we're going to assume we know these emotions and then later I'll tell you how to ask the questions to do that. So who wants to give us an example? For your business, what are some of the feelings that you can help someone move towards or what are some of the feelings or a feeling you can help them move away from? Who's up? Yes. Okay, so we're, we're here again. Yes. Um, of the reliability that you're going to turn up. Okay. The function. Mm -hmm. uh, quality product, hygiene, good presentation, how you're going to, you're just not going to serve out there. Yeah, sure. Okay, good, all right. And how is all of that going to make them feel? What feelings could that generate? They, they selected the right vendor or... Yeah. Okay, and what feeling do they get when they know that they've selected the right vendor? Okay, good, thanks. That's it, perfect, well done. Now you saw that I went through a process because the first few answers weren't quite emotion yet, were they? Emotion is a feeling word. That's perfect, well done, thank you. So that's what we need to think. Is it a feeling word? Is it a feeling word? We have a hand up at the back there. Have you got a feeling we've moved towards and away from? Yeah, actually, um, more clarity where they're going to end up. Okay, okay, good. So then I ask the question, and you ask the question, is clarity a feeling? No, it's not. So then I ask another question, what feeling do they get from that clarity? Okay, great. Now we've got a feeling, right? So that's what I want to do, is to make sure you understand, or as I said, I'll give you the communication sequence to do it, what feelings, that's a feeling word, do they want to move away or move towards? We good with that? Yep. Okay, perfect. Now we're ready to prescribe our solution. Now we're ready to talk about your products and services and connect that. So let's say we have the word, word confidence, satisfied, pride, not being embarrassed anymore, whatever they said. So they don't want to be embarrassed that people come to their function and there's no atmosphere, there's nothing different, for instance. So, the F stands for feature, as you can see on the board as well. So what is something that you would talk about? It could be your business as a whole, it could be a part of the business, a feature. So I'll get you to quickly write down, what is a feature you would talk about to a potential client? Now let's assume you've spoken to that client, you've had a good conversation, you've asked them what's working, what's not working, before you prescribe how you can help. What is a feature? Then we get it right. What is a logical benefit? What is a logical benefit for you providing that feature? So Karen, for you, what's a pain that some of your clients are telling you? What's an emotion they want to avoid? Okay, I'm frustrated at the moment, I've got all these HR issues, don't know how to deal with them. I'm frustrated, it's taken all my time, I've got better things to do. So what's a feature you would explain to them, Karen? Um, the phone email support that they've accessed. 
Okay, great. So as part of helping you, you have phone and email support. You can get me at these times or as much as you like or whatever the situation. What's a benefit? What's a logical benefit to that? Okay. So that's a, it's a, it's a, you've gone straight to a feeling. You've fast-tracked the feeling, which is fine. What's a logical benefit? Given I'm frustrated about my HR, what's a logical benefit for your phone and email support? Okay. So that's going to... Reduce staff issues, which is going to emotion. Okay, good. So then I give an emotional benefit. That emotional benefit must be a feeling. Peace of mind, yeah, it's a feeling. So then rather than saying, which is the traditional way to communicate in business, are oh, you interested in some HR help. Okay, listen, well, let me tell you what we do. The great thing about our HR is that we have telephone and email support, which means you are going to have someone there to help you all the time. Done. That's a red brain conversation. What we've done is gone red to green. So, we can certainly help you with that. What we do with, with helping you with HR is to have email and telephone communication on a regular basis so we're going to take care of some of those issues for you, which is going to pe give you peace of mind. You don't need to deal with them and you can get back to doing what is your income generating activities. That's a red to green conversation. Tim, for you, what's a feature you would talk about given I'm stressed that I don't know where all my leads are going from, I think I'm losing some. Okay, so we can help you put in a sales pipeline management, which is going to benefit, logical benefit. Okay, two, emotional benefit. Have more confidence, reduce that stress, whatever, good. See how we've got red to green, is everyone okay with that? Everyone understand that? So I'm not saying never talk about your red brain stuff, I'm not saying never talk about your products and services, that would be silly, right? But we do it, don't do it in isolation, do a red to green. Talk about it, then connect it to the feeling. Because you've already asked them some questions to diagnose what the problem is. Red to green all the time. The last little bit uh, I'm going to give you is something called an agreement. This is a bit of fun. Put your hand up if you've heard the term NLP. Neuro-linguistic program, NLP, body language. We're going to do a bit of that in the second session today. So here's a bit of NLP to play with. Effective selling is effective communication, right? So NLP is part of communication. And you all know that from a sales perspective, we need little yeses along the way, don't we? We need yes momentum, something to call it, trial closes, or whatever the case might be. But we need little yeses along the way. Inexperienced communicators or salespeople get to the end result when they're asking, will you buy... And that's when they get nervous, right? Like, oh, is this person going to say yes, no, have I done a good enough job? But in actual fact, price presentation is only 2 to 3% of the success of your sales cycle. The question about the emotion, the pain and pleasure, which we call qualification, is 80%. And most businesses don't do it, but it's 80% of the success of the sales cycle. Price presentation is only two to three. So if we get little yeses along the way, then they're very likely to give a yes at the end, aren't they? Now, I'll take you back then and just listen to that question that I asked and got lots of nods around the room. <laughs> I said they're much more likely to make a decision at the end, aren't they? And I put, so I put the question bit at the end. So this is exactly what you would do. If I said, mm, do you think they'd be more likely to make a better decision at the end? You went, uh, maybe. But I changed the wording. I used assumptive language to give you a more likely a chance to say yes. You're never in a trance. You can always say no. But in a sales communication best practice, we give them the best chance to say yes. So, for instance, for Karen, it could be, uh, hey, you can see how working with me is going to reduce that stress, can't you? So that's an assumptive statement because it's got the question bit, the can't you bit at the end. If I said, can you see how working with me is going to reduce that stress? Uh, maybe. And I create objections. So you can see how me helping you with your funnels uh, is going to give you more confidence with your leads, can't you? Yes. So I want you to make sure it's an assumptive statement. So if you can quickly write down feature benefit emotion agreement. You've done the feature benefit emotion. You've had some notes there. What's a an assumptive statement or question you can make at the end. 
You can see how that's going to work for you, yeah? That doesn't even have to be a word. It can be a noise. You can see how we're going to have lots of fun working together, yeah? We have a little saying that when you say it, the customer doubts it. When the customer says it, says that it's true. When you say it, the customer doubts it. When you say it, you're selling, right? Oh, you should do this. This is really important. You should do this. You should work with me. But if I just hold a communication sequence where I get that person to tell me, then they're telling themselves, right? It's their idea now. So I'm not telling, I'm not selling to them. I'm just holding a communication sequence where they tell me. So to answer your question, Tim, it's vital. Because if we leave it all to the last little question, when you've done your proposal, your price presentation and asked for a decision, there's too much at risk will reduce closing percentages. So then, let me add to that with NLP. NLP, there's lots to NLP, as you guys know. All I want to do with you today is teach you some little body movements, some of you are doing it already with your communication, to increase conversion. So if I add some little body movements, we call it bobbing, where I do some bright eyes, a smile, and I just bob along as I ask you that question. You can see how that's going to work, right? Well, he's trying his hardest not to. He's trying his hardest not to. And I think I still saw a little one. So we put in a bit of NLP, a bit of body. Just give me some nods as I, I'm talking to you. You can see how it's going to work, right? Yep. So we bob. If we want a yes response, if you, <laughs> look at you. It's awesome. Now, I'm doing it obvious, right? So you can see it, but it's just subtle. You can see how it's going to work, yeah? yeah I just go, yeah. Now, the other part of that is some hand gestures. So just pens down for a minute. Pens down. <clears throat> Palms up. Elicits a positive response. Now, ask blokes. We're not very good at rolling hands, so it's, you've got to train it. Rolling hands. Yeah, rolling hands. And palms up elicits a more positive response. Does it? I just did it then, didn't I? I just did it again, didn't I? Yeah. So if you want to have more positive responses, we're talking in business, but hey, outside of business this works as well, uh, especially with a 14 year old daughter that you want to sometimes influence her decision making, <laughs> then assumptive statements or little questions and a bit of bobbing and hand gesture at the end. Yep. So if we put that together, we've had some questions about this potential customer's pain. Oh, listen, all this H HR stuff doing my head in. I'm not trained that. I don't really know how to do it. It's creating a lot of stress in my business. All right. Karen says, let me, see, let me tell you how I can help you. Listen, the great thing about what we do is that it's like I'm your personal coach. You've got email access, telephone access, whenever you like. What that means, I'm going to take some of that off your hands, I'm going to deal with it, so you can go and focus on what's making you money, reduce that stress for you. You can see how that's going to be helpful, yeah? And she gives me a little yeah. So she's told herself yes. Now sometimes, we want a no answer. So what do we do with a no answer? We give a bit of a frown, a bit of a shake of the head, and a bit of a stop sign. Wow, how long have you been having all this, all this stress looking after your own HR in the last six years? Wow, six years, you don't want to keep doing that, do you? And what are they going to say? Nope. But they've told me. I haven't told them. I said, oh, you should stop doing that. If it's been six years, you should stop doing that. That's me telling them. If you say it, they doubt it. If they say it, it's true. Wow, you must be sick of that. You don't want to do that anymore, do you? No. Nah. Excellent. Well, let me tell you what I can do. A, B, C, D. That's going to work better for you, isn't it? Yes. So we go <laughs> negative. And positive, we can create, but most of the time we want some positives. Hey guys, you guys can see how that's going to help you with your communication, yeah? Yeah. I just did it again, didn't I? All right, I can't stop, I can't stop. All right, so. <laughs> now I've shown you so you can see it. So every time I do it now, yeah, get it. it's going to be really obvious to you, isn't it? <laughs> but you're not going to pick me up on it, are you? No. <laughs> Maybe. So what I want you guys to do, given this is about implementation, yes, we'll have some fun, but it's about implementation. I want you to very quickly write out a paragraph, and we get DJ almost ready to rock and roll. Uh, I want you to write out a paragraph. I want you to say, all right, this is the emotion. I've already spoken to my potential client. This is what they've told me. Now I'm going to tell them about my business or a product or a feature of my business, and I'm going to do red to green and get a yes response. So something like, listen, what I can help you do is to put some funnels together, introduce you to a CRM where all of your leads will be in one place. That means no more lost leads. You'll be able to take advantage of maximizing all the conversion on it, which is going to take that stress out of worrying about where are all my leads going. That's going to work for you, isn't it? Yes. 
So that's a little paragraph that I want you to quickly write out. Something that fits your business. It doesn't have to be too wordy, just short, sharp, shiny. So I'll shut up. Uh, if we can throw some music on for a couple of minutes, I'll give you two minutes just to write out that little paragraph. It would be fantastic. All right, here we go. So you can continue playing with homework if you like. Who wants to share? Just read through your Phoebe little paragraph. Yes, thank you. Okay, nice. Okay, good. Now that is that works best. It's good uh, something this, by the way. Well, I have a bit of bobbing going on there as well. Uh, yeah, so yeah, that relief is something that they would have spoken about. So here's an interesting point. The best emotions to use in your Phoebe are the emotions that that person has told you previously. All right, when you ask these questions to diagnose the problem, in that case, they would have said, listen, I want to feel a bit more relieved that I haven't got this long-term mortgage. So then you're using that language back, right? That is the most effective form. If they've said it, then you've got the right to return serve. If they said they don't want to be embarrassed, well, this is going to make sure you're not embarrassed. You can see how that's going to work here. However, that's great when it's a one-on-one conversation. However, this is also a marketing piece. Red to green brain is everything you do. If you want to increase decision making, which you do, it's all the decisions along the way. So go look at your website, just make a note, go look at my website, go look at your website is what I'm saying. Is it red brain or green brain? Is it all about facts, figures and data? Bye-bye. Or does that have some generic, bless you, feelings that is created or avoided from your product and services? Or do you have a testimonial from someone that says, hey, I worked with Karen, this is where I started, I was stressed, now... I feel free because she's taking care of all my HR. That's the green brain on your website. Your social media. So much social media is just red brain. But, oh, oh, it's going to be red to green. 100% of decisions is through an emotion. I'm not going to bang on about it too much longer. But it's such a key point. Good. Anyone else want to share their Phoebe? Just read it out. Yes, please. Okay. I don't know where I'm at. Okay. Um, my feature, we can take control of it for you. We'll set you up with cloud software. We'll show you and your staff how to use it and run checks on it each quarter. So it won't matter if a few mistakes are made by your staff. We'll fix it all up and then I can connect with you for an hour and go through your reports and we'll see where you're at each month or each quarter. Um, the benefit, they get their control back um, and their emotion is relief. Okay, so you're relief. Good. And they get me to say yes. Um, but my final thing is, you don't need to worry. We'll um, get it all under control for you. Okay, good. So that's a statement. That's good. Well done. Thank you. Just to improve that slightly, just get them to say yes. So what was that last little statement again? You can... um, yeah, you don't need to worry. Um, we'll get it all under control for you. Okay, so you can see how we're going to get it all under control for you, can't you? So that's just a slight adjustment on that to get that person to say yes. Yes momentum. We're not tying them and forcing them into a corner to say yes. We're just being an effective communicator, which increases our chances of them saying yes. So there's a little bit of homework for you. Go and create some Phoebe statements so you can practice them and then implement them uh, into your communication. Effective selling is effective communication. As I said, we're creating an environment where people choose to be part of what you do, not that you're ramming something down their throat and having them feel like they've been sold to. So that's our Phoebe statement. I heard Steve this morning talking about separating yourself in competitive marketplaces, separating yourself from the competition, standing out. There's two things that I want to bring to your attention about how to do that. The first one is that we must be seen as an expert. You must be seen as an expert in your industry. Now I've chosen that word carefully because I didn't say you must be seen as an expert in your business. I said, you must be seen as an expert in your industry. Now, whether you think you are an expert or not, doesn't matter. But when people speak to an expert, the conversation is inspiring. They want to follow someone that is an expert. So how do we do it? Again, whether you feel that you're an expert or not, doesn't matter. And we're never going to lie to people. (laughs) We're never going to say, I've got 100 years in this industry. If I don't, we're never going to lie to people. 
but we're going to create an understanding, a perception that you're an expert. Can you write this down? You're seen as an expert when you can teach your prospects something they don't know. If you can teach your prospects something they don't know, you'll be seen as an expert. You'll be seen as an expert when you can teach your prospects something they don't know. So what are some facts about your industry? What are some myths that you can break down? What are the trends that are happening overseas? Obviously you want the real ones, not the myths. We can break down myths, but obviously you're not going to perpetuate those myths if you don't believe in them. So what are some facts? How can you teach someone something? And we call this an ink spot, I-N-K, ink spot. It stands for I never knew that. Wow, really? I never knew that. And the best time to teach someone is just after they've told you what they want. So as soon as they tell you what they want, you've got to teach them something. It's short, sharp and shiny. It could be on the telephone. It is on the telephone and it is face-to-face. And it is in your marketing, communication, emails, etc., etc. As soon as you know what someone wants to, to achieve, you've got to teach them something. So what are some facts? What are some facts about your industry you can throw? Dumb Darren, let's assume I know nothing about your industry. I'm sure you can assume I'm dumb, Darren. It's not too difficult to do. Uh, what can you teach? Let's say I was a potential customer of yours and I'm asking some questions, inquiring about your products and services. What's something you can teach me? What's a fact? Well, I'll tell you a fact that uh, a lot of people might not know. There's over a thousand Mr. IT vendors around Australia still. Okay. Even though people call them, I never Okay, good. Yep. <laughs> wow, I never knew that. It sounds like, it sounds like an expert, doesn't he? So don't use them. No, 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 it's yours, it's yours. You keep that, you copy, copyright that. Yeah. I won't, I might miss the whippy rounds, you, you can have your that one. <laughs> what else do we know? What's some facts about HR? Oh, yes, thank you. Okay, so you may not know that 82% of these products are made with X, Y, and Z. So you may need to do some research. So there's only two things that are happening now. Either your product knowledge needs a bit of a lift, or you have the product knowledge, you're just not willing to tell me. (laughs) I'm not sure which one it is. But if it's that, you need to increase your product knowledge. This is going to separate you from the competition. If you can be seen as an expert, then that's what people follow. Abby had uh, some slides about Anytime Fitness. So let's use a fitness one. Someone comes into an Anytime Fitness, let's say, and they say, I need to lose some weight. As soon as we know what they want to achieve, we've got to t- teach them something. So we give them a fact about weight loss. Oh, you may not know. I can certainly help you with that. In fact, you may not know. Most people think just exercise is going to lose that weight. But actually, 70 to 80% of your weight loss comes from nutrition. Oh, wow, I didn't know that. I thought it was just exercise. So suddenly they're seen as an expert, people want to follow them. If it's on the telephone, they're more likely to book a time to come and see them. If it's face-to-face, they're more likely to follow their process, not smash them about price, and make a positive decision at the end. So, again, I'll get you to write down as a bit of a note, because at the end of this session, I'm going to get you to choose three things that you're going to do straight away to implement some of these skills. Not all of them straight away, you don't need to, that's why you're writing lots of notes. I'm going to get you to choose three things. So I just want to write down, go and find some things to teach. Go and find some things to teach. What can I teach my potential prospects to be seen as an expert? And in fact, what I suggest you do is to create a teach sheet or a cheat sheet. (laughs) Well, you don't have to remember them, you've got them there. So you might write down, just on a blank piece of paper, make it look nice, the three or four main reasons someone would inquire about your business. The three or four main reasons someone would inquire about your products and services. And then you might write down Two or three facts for each of those. So 
So hey, if you get an inquiry on the telephone, you got your teach sheet there, you just got it there to, you don't want to read it and sound robotic, but you got it there as a bit of a prompt, right? If you've got less experienced people in your team than you are, or if you want to create some leverage within your business where other people are selling for you, that's a great tool once you've created it for those other people in your team to utilise. Now, that's, is that red brain or green brain? Uh, red brain. Oh, he's good. Feels good. Absolutely. So that's red brain. So then we need to connect it to a green brain. I need to lose some weight. Oh, listen, we can certainly help you with that. In fact, you may not know. There's a myth out there that just exercise is going to lose that weight. In actual fact, research shows 70 to 80% of your weight loss comes from nutrition. So what we're going to do with you as your personal trainer is to help you with your nutrition and your exercise to fast track that weight loss, give you that confidence back. That's a red to green conversation. Now, if I want a yes response, I can just go, you can see how it's going to be better for you, can't you? Like, hey, yeah. Now, I've done a Phoebe, red to green, got a yes response. So I want these conversations to be within your head or within your business. I was in a business yesterday, training a business yesterday and in the lunch break they brought their computer to me and they said Darren I'm just about to send an invoice oh, sorry a, a proposal can you look at it please and let me know before I send it how can I improve it that's a great conversation to have you guys should be doing that to each other with yourself and the, one of the questions is it red to green and this was just had all numbers on it it was just about specs completely red brain so I said, hey, what was the conversation? Why did that person initially come to you? And they told me what all their frustrations were. So then we changed it. Hey, listen, it was great to catch up with you the other day to help you reduce that frustration within your business. Now I've connected to that emotion straight away. There's two ways you can go. Gave them the specs of two. And then they wrapped up the email with that green brain emotion as well. So I want you to look at websites, emails, SMSs, telephone calls, everything you do, and make sure it's got a green brain component to it. Cool with that? Yep. Beauty. So, create some teach sheets. Then the other thing to separate you from your competition is to <laughs> utilise your USPs. You, everyone knows what USP stands for, do they? What's it stand for? <laughs> it wasn't quite as loud as I hoped. Uh, unique selling point or unique selling proposition. Unique selling point. <laughs> Mistake that happens in businesses. I get to see businesses almost every day of my year, which is pretty exciting. And I say, hey, what's your USP? And they go, oh, we've we got the happiest staff. We've got the best service. Yeah, that's nice. And then at lunchtime, I walk 200 metres down the road to their competitor. And I say, hey, what are your USPs? What do you reckon they say? We've got the best staff. We've got the best service. <laughs> no. So your true USPs is when you absolutely stand out. When you're the first or the longest or the largest or the shortest, there's something that completely stands out. We're the only to have. Now, some of the businesses that I work with, they're the first or the largest in the world to do something. Well, that makes it pretty easy, doesn't it? And some of the first are the only in Australia. Others are just like the business down the road. Let's, let's use that Anytime Fitness example. Anytime Fitness is a box club, and there's lots of them around. You know that. There's other 24-hour box clubs around as well. There could be one, two suburbs away. But they can create a USP without lying to people, but being creative with their language by saying, we're the only in this suburb to have X, Y, and Z. So that separates them from the competition. There might be one, two suburbs away. <laughs> hey, we're the only ones in this suburb to have this personal training program. Wow, that's great. So if we connect a teaching to a USP, fantastic. This company I worked with yesterday, they're called BFT Automation. They make motors for boom gates and all that sort of stuff. I work with them regularly. Um, and we, we were creating some USPs. And so they got creative with their language. Like they have a, a, a Wi-Fi system where you, know, you, re, you, can, you can use your motors from your lounge room and on big properties and you don't have to go to the gate to let people in, all this sort of stuff. And their competitors have it as well. But they named it Ulink. And they're the only ones to use that name. So guess what? They're the only ones in Australia with U-Link compatibility. Oh, wow. That's important. No, we're not lying to people, but you're being creative with your language. I'm the only one to have A, B, C, something. So if you want to separate yourself from the competition, you've got to teach to be seen as an expert. 
You've got to connect that to your feeling for a green brain, and you've got to have a USP, or at least one USP. More USPs are better. If people follow experts and you're the only one to offer something, people stop looking around. Does it make sense when people inquire about your product or service that um, they shop around? They might call two or three different businesses similar. So on the telephone, if you do telephone calls or face-to-face or through your email communication or however you communicate, if you can teach them something to be seen as an expert and show them that you're the only one to do something, they'll stop looking around. Your conversion can go up. You create V for value, which means you're not just competing on price, you're competing on V for value, which means you can charge more and they can feel that they get better value. I think that's a pretty good outcome. All right, let's keep moving. I said that avoiding pain is the greatest motivator of human behaviour for a quick decision. So as much as we like to be talking about positive and happy and upbeat and how this is going to fix your problems, we also need to have some ramifications. What if nothing changes? This is where we get that question about being frustrated or stressed or whatever the conversation might be. We know that avoiding pain is the greatest motivator of human behaviour. So even if you might be a positive, happy, upbeat person, In your sales process, 99.9% of your sales process is positive, happy and upbeat. But for a short period of time, we need to create a little bit of negative emotion. Avoiding pain is the greatest motivation, motivator of human behaviour for a quick decision. So a mentor of mine is a gentleman named Darren Hardy. He happens to have the first name as me, but that's not why I've chosen. He's an American guy. Uh, I'll just mentor with him every day. Um, And he uses this example. He said, what if... There was a plank on the floor here. What if there was a plank on the floor here? It went across the other side of the room. It's just slightly wider than my feet. And on the end of that plank is 20 bucks. He said, all you've got to do is walk across that plank. It's wider than my feet to go get the 20 bucks. Would would we go get the 20 bucks? Yeah, there's no risk. Just go get the 20 bucks. But what he said is, what if that's elevated? What if that's elevated over two buildings? And the, the, it's rainy and it's windy and it's hailing and it's slippery. And it's 20 bucks, right? So it's not nice and relaxed like this. Boy, hang on a second. 20 bucks? Would I go risk my life for 20 bucks? No. But what if it wasn't 20 bucks? What if on the other side of that building were my kids and it was on fire? Would I go? In a heartbeat. I wouldn't even think about it. Because the ramifications of not taking action is so high that I bloody take the action. So avoiding pain is the greatest motivator of human behaviour for a quick decision. How do we put that into your business? Well, we ask some questions. Now, in some industries, it's a written form, needs analysis, and some it's just verbal, but we can help you with implementation of that. But it's something like this. This is called the four W's of the H. There's eight steps to your sales cycle. This step is called qualification. It's step number three. It's 80% of the success of your sales cycle. Hey, so tell me, you know, we do a bit of rapport and mutual commonality, and by the way, we'll help you with that in, that in our second session today after a quick break. We build some rapport and mutual commonality, and we ask some questions. So tell me, tell me about what's happening with your HR at the moment. Conversation, conversation. Tell me what's happening with your lead capture at the moment. Oh my God, I don't even know where my leads come from. I don't even know how many I get. I'm sure we're losing them. Okay, so there's lots of things that I can help you with. What would you say is your number one priority right now? Listen, I need the leads that come through to come through a funnel so I know that they're there. Now, remember we said as soon as we know what they want to achieve, you've got to teach them something. So by the way, in there is a perfect time for an ink spot. As soon as you know what they want to achieve, you've got to teach them something. Now we create some emotion. Hey, listen, so where are two or three areas that not knowing where your leads are coming from and potentially losing leads is affecting you and your business? Oh, listen, I put all this money into marketing and then I don't know where it goes. We're losing sales on it. Oh, I'm not sleeping very well at night. Really? Okay, so why is that? Tell me more about that. Oh, well, we've been focused on this, that and the other. We've just got this new project going and it just hasn't been a focus. We put something in called a secret how. Wow, how long has that been going on for? Oh, this has been in business for six years and we've actually never had it. Wow, six years. You must be sick of that. Or oh, wow, six years, you must be ready for a change. What do they say? 
yes, I'm ready for a change. Now, I did it very obviously, you can see it. Wow, six years, you must be sick of that. Yes, I am. Or, if you want to soften it, wow, six years, must be ready for a change. Yes, I've just committed to a change. You're one step closer to getting on as a client. They would say, hey, listen, in the perfect world, there's lots that I can help you with. When would be a realistic time that we can put your new CRM system, capture all your leads? When would that be? Ah, oh, well, you create a time frame. Create a time frame. Date. It's not, ah, oh, next financial year, towards the end of the year. It must be a set time. The date creates, is a hook. It creates urgency to take action. And then we need to create some negative feeling because avoiding pain is the greatest motivator of human behaviour. Unfortunately, I wish it wasn't the case, but it is. So if you want to increase your conversion, you do something called the big how. Now, if you want to soften it, you can start with a positive. Hey, listen, how good's it going to be when I've created your CRM system, you've got all your lead, your funnels coming through, you know exactly how many leads you've got and that they've all been contacted. Oh, that'd be awesome. Hey, listen, I know you're busy, so what would be the ramifications if you got busy being busy and the rest of 2018 came along you're in exactly the same condition you are now with your business or maybe even worse with not knowing where your leads are coming from. Where would that put your business? So there's the negative, right? Negative emotion. I don't even know if I'd be in business, Tim. Are we right on the edge, mate? It's that short period of time of a feeling in their guts. I can't, I can't keep going. I must make a change. And then, the good news is you can be the solution. Your tonality comes up, you get excited. Listen, don't worry, we've done this a million times before. We're the specialists in A, B, C and D. We'll certainly help you reduce that stress, get that confidence back in your business so you can sleep better at night. That's a process called the four W's and a H. It's 80% of the success of your sales cycle. And the key of it, these are just the four W's, is to earn the right to ask the big how. Essentially, it's how would you feel if you took no action? You kept doing exactly what you're doing, so you're in the same condition with your business that you are now, maybe even worse towards the end of the year. Where would that put your business? Well, listen, don't worry. We're the experts in ABCD. This is what we're going to do to help you. So you refine that to suit your business. You make it your own, and that will increase conversion. Because avoiding pain, I'm going to keep saying it, avoiding pain is the greatest motivator of human behaviour for a quick decision. All right. So that's something you can play with. The last little thing for you is given that green brain is 100% of decision making and red brain is what percentage? Zero. Yep, we'll give you a hint. Zero, but not three, but zero. Red brain is 0% of the decision. Sometimes we get to price presentation or a proposal and we just go well, red brain again. So we've got to take out sales killing words like price, like pay, like fee, like admin, like direct debit. And we've got to replace them with something better. So instead of, oh, okay, you just got to sign a contract. Yeah, yeah, who wants to sign contracts? Hey, listen, all we've got to do is take care of a little bit of paperwork. Just a slight shift in language, right? Effective selling is effective communication. Oh, you just got to pay by direct debit. Hey, you just got to take care of it bit by bit. It's the same answer, the same outcome. It's just a different wording attached to it. They don't feel like they've been sold to. They feel like they've chosen to buy. So they have it. Be careful with your language. And don't go red brain. Some other things we do with uh, red brain, which is quite interesting, and moving it to green brain, is on your proposals, on your quotes, whether you do it verbally, whether it's in writing. Uh, oh, I just fell down there, that's no good. Uh, I strongly suggest that you don't put dollar signs on your proposals. And don't say the word dollars. Is dollars red brain or green brain? Red brain. If you want something to sound smaller, Use just or only in front of it. That's just, just 22K, that's going to reduce that stress for you. If I said it's $22,000, yeah, that sounds yucky. I listen, it's just 22K, that's going to make sure you're not stressed about those leads anymore. So put just or only in front of it. Say it a little bit faster, they need to understand what you say, but you can say it a little bit faster. No, it's really okay. So what do you say? It's really okay. Yeah. Have you been drinking at lunchtime? What about in like an e-commerce Yep, don't do it. So you look at your, we're in New South Wales, you look at your higher end restaurants, there's no dollar signs on the menus. Wagyu beef, 45. They don't have the dollar signs, it's just so it's less logical, more emotional. So it's a great question. I hate that though, I actually find that really annoying. I don't know if it's because I'm a gout, but like when I go to restaurants and I see that without the dollar signs, yep. 
Yep, that's okay. That's okay. Because these best practices are based on the majority. Is it going to work for every individual? No. But we need to be careful of that. So my suggestion to you, I appreciate your honesty. My suggestion to you is don't let that determine what you do in your business. Because not all of your customers are going to be thinking like that. They won't even be aware of it. It'll just create a little bit more emotion. Uh, sorry, I also feel like as an accountant, I'm yes. service, but if I didn't put dollar signs on my quotes, they'd think I was an idiot. Yep. That's what we're embedded to, to think. Yeah. Now, we're going to do behavioural styles. I strongly suggest you don't do it. Now, you could do it in the total if you wanted to, but you don't do it in every little item. But if you want to do it in the total to feel better, so be it, but it'll reduce your conversion. Yeah, okay. if, uh, if someone's uh, communicating with you, with dollar signs, yeah. and they don't have the money to change it up. Yeah, that's a good question. We're going to do mirror matching in the next session. Uh, my suggestion is no. So anytime people save something, and by the way, today you save $200, make it big, put dollar signs, save dollars. But if it's you've got to pay, I oh, just pay 200 today. But you save $200. <laughs> right? Okay, you're getting the point. All right. Now, the last little thing was covered this morning, right? So I'm just going to uh, go over that really quickly. Always alternate choice. Never give one option. If we give one option, the customer feels like they're pushed into a corner, they're railroaded, it feels like we're selling to them. But if we have two or three, like we've spoken about this morning, the customer feels like they've got a choice to make. It's their choice. All of those two or three are good for you. It means they're going to be your customer. But please make sure you connect an emotion to it, a green brain to it. Oh, we've got way A, which will reduce that little bit of stress for you. But what I really suggest is way B, which is this much. It includes X, Y, and Z. Not only is that going to reduce that stress, but it's going to give you that pride in knowing your business is on the right track for the next 10 years. So don't just alternate choice price presentation, attach green brain to the one that you'd prefer them to have. The one that you'd prefer them to buy, which is better for you, and honestly needs to be good for the client as well, we need to attach that green brain to that. Last little thing for you, and as Abby said as well, the video is going to be available, um, so make sure you go back and re-watch it and, and take some notes. Uh, I'll, at the end of our next session, I'll get you to write down the three things you're going to implement, but this takes practice. Just like building a bicep, practicing golf, we need repetition role plays uh, to make sure. That's what we do in training. We do lots and lots of role plays when we train with a group for the whole day so that you can walk out of there comfortable, ready to implement. I do have some freebies, some things to give away for you today. So first thing, we have an e-book, make more sales with these seven questions. So if you'd like that, just shoot me an SMS uh, or email. And by the way, um, when you do SMS me, you also go into the draw for uh, something I'll tell you about afterwards that's valued over $600. So just SMS me, name and your business. I'll shoot you the uh, ebook and also put you in the drawer for a product which I'll tell you about in my next session. Also, you're welcome to join our Impact Sales Success Club. It's free training once a week. Some of you are already involved in it, which is cool. So, yep. That's in your, it's in your notes as well if you want to uh, follow through in your notes. So the Impact Sales Success Club, free training with Steve and I, Steve Jensen, our CEO and I. Um, you just jump on, answer a couple of questions and we'll put you in there. It's also recorded so you can go back and look at it later as well. Um, and also, you feel free to, I've got over 20 videos that I've just uploaded to a YouTube channel. Uh, I also do a Tuesday Facebook Live that some of you watch, just five or 10 minutes, quick educational piece called the Tuesday Tickle and Tick. So if you want to follow me on Facebook, you're welcome to do that. All right, very good. Back to you, Steve. We're going straight into a break. Back to Steve. All right, give me a round of applause. Thank you, Darren.